hello and welcome back everybody to our season finale of our virtual happy hour series the spirit hub we're at episode 16 today and i'm your host emily um today we're going to the town of portland oregon to chat with brooke at freeland spirit hi <laughs> Awesome. Um, just for some of you that don't know, um, Spirit Hub is an online retailer of craft spirits from over 200 independently owned distilleries. We ship hard to find spirits directly to your door within the state of Illinois. Um, we are planning on expanding into new states this year, so just be on the lookout. Um, and again, we're here um, in Portland, Oregon with Freeland Spirits, um, and we're excited to talk to Brooke today about a couple of um, gins that they have and um, talk about a little bit about their bourbon also. Um, follow along and ask your questions in our Facebook live chat um, for Q&A session towards the end, and we will also have a coupon uh, code for you to purchase Freeland Spirits products. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Brooke, and she is going to tell you everything about Freeland Spirits. Hi, my name is Brooke. Um, I'm the hospitality manager with Freeland Spirits. Um, we're a local craft distillery here in Portland, Oregon. Thanks for joining us um, with Spirit Hub. Um, so a little bit about us. So we are one of very few in history um, distilleries that are all women owned and operated. Um, our dream from our founder all began back in 2015, um, kind of a whiskey fateful night where she had been already thinking of starting a distillery um, and her friend who is a local rancher here in Oregon um, kind of brought up the idea, what if I grew the grain and you made some rye whiskey from it and um, that conversation blossomed and Jill really kind of ran with that um, and decided that's exactly what she wanted to do with her life. Um, she comes from a background in nonprofit agriculture work. Um, so it was kind of two things came together. She met Corey, she already had the agricultural side. Um, and that's something that's really important to us here at Freeland is um, focusing on not only the women of the craft, but where we're so sourcing um, all of our ingredients. Um, so for uh, our gin, we're working with, um, so this is gonna be our, our gin here. Um, we source from Vibrant Valley Farms for some of our fresh ingredients, which are, um, it's a local uh, farm here that's also all women owned and operated. Um, and we get mint, rosemary, um, thyme from them and cucumber. Um, that all goes into our gin. Um, and then we have our Geneva gin, which is um, not going to be your classic style. So this one is a Dutch style of gin. Um, this one is actually a whiskey based. So we're sourcing the rye here from Oregon um, from a really awesome purveyor here, Camas Country Mill. Um, and then we're using local hazelnuts, which um, if you don't know from Oregon, um, hazelnuts grow rampant here. Um, they're also known as filberts here. <laughs> um, and so we're using those local ingredients in that. Um, our distiller, Molly, um, she uh, is an amazing distiller in many regards. Um, her recipes are super unique. Um, she actually just won Forbes 30 Under 30 this past year in the food and beverage category. She's on the panel for the American Craft Distillery Associ Association, um, among other uh, feats that she has. So they're really a dynamic power duo. Love it, awesome, thank you. Um, <laughs> is there a reason for the unique shape of your bottle? Yes. So um, Jill, our founder, she really wanted to go for something that represented um, the Northwest and also um, women, obviously. So if you can see our logo, it's probably hard to tell um, in the video, um, but we have our Lady of the Grain um, and the style of the bottle is kind of in the shape of a raindrop. Um, so obviously in the North, being in the Northwest, rain is a part of our everyday life. Um, so it's really symbolic of that. I love that. Um, and that was asked by Holly. Sorry about that. All right. Um, so we do carry the bourbon. Um, we do have your bourbon. Unfortunately, right now it's out of stock. It is on the way back in. So um, everybody viewing, be on the lookout for that. But um, if you want to tell us a little bit about your bourbon, we'd love to hear that. Yeah. So our bourbon, um, so Jill's main love is going to be whiskey, especially a rye whiskey. Obviously, that takes a lot of time in barrels. So while our rye whiskey is sitting in barrels currently, um, she went decided to make a bourbon. Um, so what we did is sourced um, bourbon 
Um, and we got a 12 year and a three year bourbon that our master distiller Molly then blended and we finished it in Elk Cove Pinot Noir barrels. Um, that's a local vineyard here in Oregon and um, Pinot Noir is obviously very famous in Oregon. So we wanted to give it um, still that local terroir. Um, so that's where the Pinot Noir comes in, kind of rounds it out. It's very smooth. You got some subtle um, berry notes, lots of vanilla um, and caramel in this one. So yeah, it's very delicious. Love it. <laughs> Love it. It's really good. I'm, I've had it myself and um, I actually gifted it to my aunt who earned her PhD this year. So that was her, that was her graduation gift. She loves it. Um, by the way, <laughs> good, awesome, perfect. Um, awesome. All right. Um, well, we are going to get into some cocktail making here in just a second, so stay tuned. All right. Well, if you're just joining us, um, again, we are Spirit Hub. Um, we are an online delivery, online retailer of craft spirits. Um, we are doing a virtual happy hour series today, and we are talking with Brooke from Freeland Spirits out in Portland, Oregon. Uh, she just told us a little bit about her gins and uh, gave us a little insight about the bourbon that we carry. Um, she is now going to get into some cocktail making, so um, be sure to um, ask your questions in our uh, Facebook chat for some Q&A later on, and let's get us some shaking some cocktails here. Yeah. So we're gonna start with uh, our favorite classic, um, which is going to be a gin gimlet. Um, so the reason we chose this one is because we feel it really complements our gin perfectly and it's super easy to make at home. Um, you really only need our gin, um, lime juice and simple syrup. So that makes it an easy one if you don't have a whole lot on hand at your house. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take uh, your shaker tin. Right here. Um, we're gonna measure out two ounces of Freeland gin. And then we're going to do equal parts of um, lime juice and simple syrup. Got my lime juice. So we're going to do uh, three quarter ounce of lime juice and three quarter ounce of simple syrup. And then we're going to get to shaking. So the key to shaking your cocktail perfectly is gonna be shaking for about eight to 10 seconds. So I'm gonna give it a nice shake. <laughs> and then we're gonna go ahead and strain this over your favorite glass of choice. We like our antique glasses here, especially for a gimlet, being since it's from the 1867. So <laughs> I'm gonna pour that out. And you're all ready. Cheers. <laughs> Beautiful. Awesome. That's perfect. Um, again, that is a gin gimlet made with Freeland gin. Um, you can find that uh, recipe in our Facebook Live chat right here. So check that out. And um, you want to get on to the next one, the bramble? Yes. All right. So there are... Um, a few different ways to make a bramble. Um, we're going to kind of do a take on the classic variation. Um, typically, how um, the kind of the uh, creator of this cocktail uh, made it was that you would shake without the blackberry liqueur first. But we're going to do the opposite, and we're going to shake with the blackberry liqueur. I'm also going to mash um, or uh, muddle some blackberries and mint into ours, so it's a little bit different than a classic one. Um, another really awesome thing is if you don't have blackberry liqueur, um, what you can do instead of the recipe I'm about to give you is um, muddle extra blackberries and add more simple syrup. But that's just if you don't have this on hand. Um, so this is how we're gonna make our bramble. So I'm gonna start with about, um, you can kind of choose, but I like more mint. So I'm gonna do eight leaves of mint and then about five blackberries. We're gonna give it a nice muddle. So get your muddler. If you don't have one of these at home, which most, most people don't, um, you can just take the back of a wooden spoon or a spatula. Um, really any tool that you might have in your kitchen will work well. And you're just gonna give it a nice muddle until um, the mint is fragrant. fragrant. Um, you wanna be careful with mint because if you over muddle it, it can start to have like a foul smell. So once it starts being fragrant, you know it's done. 
Interesting. All right, and then we're gonna add our other ingredients. So for this one, we're gonna do an ounce and a half of Freeland gin. We're gonna do three quarter ounce of a blackberry liqueur. Three quarter ounce of lemon. and half an ounce of simple syrup. Okay. Now we got all of our ingredients in there. We're gonna shake this one again. All right. Another good shake. <laughs> this one I'm going to double strain. If you have a mason jar at home, I recommend a mason jar. It kind of gives it a nice scramble feel. Um, we have a kind of variation of that here. And I'm going to double strain this one. If you don't have a double strainer, that's fine. Um, just to get out some of those minty and blackberry particles. We're going to add some ice to this. And we're actually going to make it um, sparkling. So I'm going to add some soda water on top of it. Look at that color. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can garnish with a, a lemon wedge or mint. Um, I chose mint because I love mint and it's kind of the season right now. Um, so there's our bramble. <laughs> I love it. it. Looks delicious. Thank Perfect. So thank you, um, and thank you for giving us some inside tips on um, some quick grab and goes for your cocktail making at home. Uh, again, that was the bramble, and that features the Freeland gin, and you can find that recipe um, on our Facebook mm -hmm. chat. I know it's so pretty. I love it. It's a beautiful yeah. color. Um, nothing really is better than blackberry and mint, and uh, I definitely love like blackberry and lemon. Um, those those flavors really complement each other. Yeah. Um, well, perfect. Again, that was made with the Freeland Gin, um, and that is a um, best. You guys took home the um, best in category in the American Distilling Institute 2018 with that gin. So, um, okay. award winning gin. Perfect. Um, do you want to share a little bit how you can enjoy the Geneva Gin? I know that's um, a little different than, uh, you know, a, a regular, like, Amer new American style gin. Um, how would you enjoy uh, the Geneva in a cocktail, or how would you suggest? Yeah. Yeah, so don't let the pink bottle fool you on this one. Um, this has some of the most strong flavors um, of any gin I've ever had. Um, because of that grain background, you're gonna have a little hints of sweetness, but um, we used caraway in this guy, so it's got some smokiness. Um, so there's some smoke, some spice, and a little sweetness. Um, so playing with cocktails is a lot of fun with Geneva. Um, I always kind of like to go towards um, something that complements that smoke. So even something similar to like a margarita of sorts, um, some fruit. We just had one that was like a strawberry mojito the other day that was really good. Um, so you really want to make sure that you're playing with um, flavors that are also dominant so that they can stand up against the Geneva gin. Um, otherwise, all those flavors are going to get lost. Um, the Geneva is just going to totally overpower it. Um, it's also really nice and how they do this in um, the Netherlands is they traditionally just sip on it with a Pilsner or lager back. Um, so that's a really great way to enjoy it as well. Um, you get kind of the nice beer as a complement to the Geneva um, and you just get to really take in all the flavors that it has. So, yeah. Interesting. Well, per that's great. Perfect. Um, that sounds really interesting how you like add beer to it or like have it as a secondary like chaser. Um, interesting. I'll have to try that. Yeah, Perfect. that's the traditional way in the Netherlands and <laughs> it seems to work well. They know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, is there any, um, I'm sure there's multiple ways to enjoy the bourbon, but what is your favorite way to enjoy your Freeland bourbon? Yes. So my favorite thing about this bourbon um, is that it's not overly sweet. So when Jill decided um, that she wanted to um, kind of create our own bourbon here, um, she actually went for one that has a higher rye in it. Um, so that rye really stands out. So there's some nice spice to it. 
Um, and then from the Pinot Noir barrels, you're gonna get a lot of like subtle kind of fruit notes. Um, so I actually really prefer drinking this bourbon. I mean, obviously it's gonna be great in an old fashioned in Manhattan, but personally I like really love it with fruits. Um, so anything, um, even like this blackberry bramble, you could do that as like a bourbon smash would be delicious. Um, anything with berries, strawberries, um, we like stuff with mango, peaches, um, it's really great with this bourbon. Um, let's it kind of, and brown derbies are good too. That's another classic you can make. So lemon and grapefruit juice and this and you're, you're set. Gosh, it all sounds so delicious. So good. And of <laughs> course on the rocks, um, that bourbon is amazing by itself, just with some ice and let it breathe. It is, it's really good. Enjoyable. Perfect. Perfect. Um, all right. Well, um, viewers, don't forget to ask your questions for Brooke um, to get a little uh, to know more about Freeland Spirits, anything that's on your mind. Um, I do have a question. So um, with uh, um, we have the three bottles that you guys have. Um, do you guys have any other bottles that we could possibly get here on Spirit Hub or do you have any special bottles in the work? <laughs> Um, I just had to get permission. <laughs> so we do have something exciting in the works right now. Um, so we are going to be um, releasing. We're in kind of the final stages of our R&D on more of a dry gin um, that's going to be not necessarily Navy strength, but closer. So we're calling it kind of recession proof. Um, considering the uh, global pandemic right now, <laughs> um, we thought people might need a little extra kick in their gin. Um, and so we're going for more of a dry style. Um, our, our classic gin here, um, this one's really great um, with like lime and lemon and, and those type of cocktails, but it's not really made for a martini. Um, so that's kind of the idea behind our other gin is that it's more of a martini style gin. Um, mm. So hopefully that'll be releasing by July. So, Ooh, we'll so exciting <laughs> yeah a little teaser thank you thanks for the teaser there awesome yes. we also do um, um i mean you don't carry them but we have like canned cocktails and things like that that we work on here um so we're always trying to evolve and go with what um is kind of trending so yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, and your and your bar and your tap room behind you there. I mean, your facility looks beautiful. The bar looks beautiful. I've seen a few pictures in there, and you guys have open windows. I mean, see the reflection a little bit. Looks yeah, great. so we're working with a 500 gallon copper still that's behind me. Um, I don't know if you can see with the reflection there, but um, she does all of our our work here. Um, she's a part of the family, so <laughs> yeah, we have For a lovely sure. tasting room here. Awesome. Um, I do have another question. Um, is there um, a, um, is there a, a reason or um, um, I guess like the background of why you named your distillery Freely and Spirit? Yes, and I did forget to mention that earlier. Um, so Jill, who is our founder and CEO, um, her grandmother, it was super important in her formative years um, and taught her a lot of really important lessons growing up. Um, one of them being that all good things come from scratch and also that women can be whatever they want to be. Um, so that really has given Jill um, a huge push in her life to always focus on those two things in whatever she does. Um, and that is Mima Freeland. Um, so Jill's last name is Keeler, um, but her Mima's last name is Freeland. Um, so this is kind of an ode to Mima. Um, she never, she said, Apparently she never touched a drop of booze in her life, um, but, <laughs> but she is a uh, very important in Jill's life and um, now she's swimming in booze. So. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Now we got booze for her. So it's perfect. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love that. Yeah. Um, and then you said, um, well, being a woman owned distillery and mostly women operated, um, what are the kind of challenges that were, um, you know, what are the challenges that you've really kind of overcome or run into? Yeah, so um, there are definitely going to be your unique challenges with being all women owned and operated. Um, one of them is um, securing those investments and small business loans. Um, so I'm not sure what the exact percentage is, but it's something like less than 10% of small business loans are given to women. Um, and Jill went through a series of her own kind of strife and struggle with that, um, trying at many different banks and institutions, 
um, to get those small business loans approved and she was denied many times. Um, and a lot of people also just being like, are you kidding? Like, you're not even in the industry. Like, who do you think you are trying to do this? Um, you know, you're gonna get a lot of that backlash. Um, and so it did take a while for her to get um, the capital to even start this project of hers. Um, and then, yeah, definitely getting um, investors to get on board um, was a huge part of that challenge. Um, and then on top of that, even, you know, it was such a blessing that she found Molly, um, who is, you know, wonderful at what she does, super creative, um, driven in so many ways, but um, to find, you know, someone that you're gonna partner with and who is in this industry and close by is like very slim chances. So um, it was really lucky that that happened. And um, yeah, they just, it was kind of fate, <laughs> but yeah. Like, I love that. And I love um, Molly's, um, you guys do like a distilling 101 like show on Facebook or like YouTube or whatnot. You guys have your own show. I, I've tuned into that a couple of times. So I do love that and it's really knowledgeable. Um, you learn a lot. You guys look like you guys have a lot of um, equipment and um, to be precise what they're distilling. So it's really interesting. I love tuning in. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have any other, do you have anything else you want to share or any um, insights, anything else? Um, mostly that um, we're looking, we've been looking to expand. So we've been really dominating, dominating um, the West Coast. That's been our initial goal. You know, we were founded just a few years ago. So to um, continue that is what we're working on. Spirit Hub's helping with that, which is amazing. Uh, <laughs> and we definitely appreciate it. Um, so yeah, just that's kind of our goal right now is to continue um, spreading the good word of Freeland and the good spirits and um, getting it out there to everyone else in the country. Hopefully one day we can uh, get it out there internationally. Um, but right now we're just keeping pushing and yeah, we'll try and get it, get it to as many states as we can as fast as possible. That's right. And Spirit Hub is here to help you with that. So be on the lookout again, everybody, for <laughs> viewership. All right. Um, well, that will wrap up our last episode of Virtual Happy Hour for this season. Um, stay tuned for season two. We've got something in the works that we want to continue this on. Um, we do appreciate everyone who has tuned in. Um, especially to this episode with Freeland Spirits. We thank you, Brooke, for joining us today. Um, love hearing everything about Freeland, what you guys stand for, your products. You guys have really interesting stuff, really tasty stuff, really good stuff. Yep. Thank you. We appreciate that. Yes. All right, everybody. Um, again, we have a coupon code for you to purchase Freeland Spirits. Um, and that will be um, HAPPY16, H-A-P-P-Y-1-6, and you can use that at checkout. Um, and uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we all hope you enjoy cocktail making at home with us for virtual happy hour. Take care. <laughs> thank you.